one of the people who's chronicling uh, what I think is one of the great things that has come out of this incredibly horrific period in, in American politics and, and, and a disastrous recession gone bad is the emergence of some fantastic new leaders, not just political leaders, but grassroots leaders and media leaders. And they happen to be uh, at the forefront of leadership in the Tea Party, and that is women. That is a major, major aspect of what is going on uh, in this country right now is women who are leading the Tea Party movement. It is not. I do not get phone calls from guys saying I want you to speak out in Pasadena or Quincy or in Washington or in Dallas. I'm getting calls from women who are organized. They know the material out there. They're informed. They're using new media. And Steve Bannon has a new film out called Fire from the Heartland, The Awakening of the Conservative Woman. And he saw this thing uh, from the get-go, and he's already been able to, you know, this, this movie features some of our favorites. Uh, Michelle Bachman is in the film. We've got, we, we've got so many people. Uh, uh, Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Andrew. What inspired you uh, to make this movie? Why have you focused on, on the women out there? One in particular, I will say, has emerged as a rock star of epic proportion, and that is Dana Lash, who is featured incredibly prominently in there. What inspired you to do this movie, and why did you pick the women that you chose uh, to feature in this film? What inspired me, you may remember last year when we were at the, early this year when we showed Generation Zero at the uh, at the National Tea Party Convention, I had spent about nine months making Generation Zero, which is about the cultural collapse and the financial collapse. As I was doing that, I started spending all this time at tea parties, whether they were in Dallas or whether they were in, you know, California or in Searchlight, Nevada, and I noticed that there was a huge cultural phenomenon that these women who heretofore had been apolitical were now at the vanguard of this populist rebellion. And they just weren't the guys organizing the events. They actually you had women, some of whom had you know only graduated from high school, some had some college, some were, were college graduates, but had graduated years before and had, had not majored in political science. They knew the Constitution called. They knew the Federalist Papers. They knew more about the health care bill than congressmen I knew. They knew more about the stimulus package and about TARP than investment bankers I know. And I said, this is unbelievable. I said, this is, this is a cultural phenomenon. We've never had a mass movement in this country really led by women. And these women are, you know, they're informed, they're tough, they're aggressive. And uh, I said, this is going to be the biggest tectonic plate shift uh, in American culture and American politics. Well, the, I'm going to add a parenthesis. Just as the women have led the Tea Party movement, despite the mainstream media's attempts to frame the Tea Party as racist and it's played down, an historic amount of Republican and Tea Party endorsed black candidates who I think are going to win and election day the mainstream media in the Democratic Party is going to realize their attempts to marginalize the Tea Party as racist they're going to emerge with some of the best candidates that have come out of a movement that happen to be black and happen to be Americans and happen to get it so between the women uh, in, in the Tea Party movement and the black leadership this is going to be a tectonic shift uh, of, of the multicultural kind, and it, it is it is what you you know you have an interesting background. You came from Goldman Sachs. You're the type of person who gives you a you boo yourself. At least you boo your background, and you are a populist who has stood up against what has taken this country down. And it's not just uh, a lack of understanding of economics and and just uh, spending money that we don't have to spend. You you have looked at this as a cultural phenomenon what has happened to this country the elites it's the financial elites on wall street and and the political class both republican and democrat that have taken care of themselves and abandoned the working man and woman in this country in the middle class and that's what i try to chronicle in these films i, I, I look i come from a blue-collar family and uh you know i was in the service so I, my, my roots 
and my heart are with the working men in this country, regardless of the education or my profession. I want to go to something you just said about African Americans and women. The mainstream media only betrays the women in this movement as crazy, and they discount the, 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 the African Americans as, as, as a collection of Uncle Toms. What they're missing is that these are actually the driving forces in our movement. And, 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 and so they've completely, and the reason is they, they discount it, it goes to the heart of their narrative. It, 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 our guys are not victims. They do not believe in victimology. They do not believe in the, in the progressive left narrative of women living in a repressive patriarchy, or that African Americans can't succeed in American society on their own free will. And that's I mean, why the, the left, that's why the left will not, if they, that's why they attack these people so viciously. That is what really attracted me to, to start focusing on these women, is that how viciously they were attacked by the progressive left. Well, let me tell you about two of the stars of your film that, that re reflect this, Deneen Borelli and Sonny Johnson. The latter, I think, uh, is, is just just kind of owns the film with her honesty and the fact that she came from poverty uh, and, and, and recognized uh, that the American way was in her individualism and the freedom that this country granted her. Sonny Johnson, I, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and, and Sonny comes from the, 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 the probably one of the toughest projects in, in Richmond is from Hall Street. You know, Sonny, his mother was a, was, was a crackhead. She was basically abandoned as a, as a child and given to her, her father's brother's girlfriend, uh, who happened to be a very religious woman and, and really raised Sonny the right way. But Sonny has come to her own awakening and is, quite frankly, a firebrand. She's one of the most inspirational speakers and one of this new emerging generation of leaders, along with people like Deneen and Dana and Michelle Moore, uh, that I think the film is really, I mean, we've got people like Michelle Bachman in it, but the story is really these, these women that will become known over the next couple of years, but are unknown today, and that their stories, they, they are not country club Republicans. These, these women do not have five handicaps. Right? Well, they, let, let me tell you something about this. They, they, these people know that Sarah Palin has, is the predicate, the mainstream media setting an example. If you're going to come out there and start speaking in Costco uh, weekend uh, warrior type of language that goes against the elites and in the language that the average citizen in suburbia and in rural America can relate to, not the beltway talk, you're going to be attacked especially hard if you're a woman. And there's a person who comes from Hollywood in your film who I think is incredibly inspirational because not only is she going to be attacked by the mainstream media, she's now closing her opportunities as a working uh, and successful actress in Hollywood. And, and that is Janine Turner. And I have to give her credit where credit is due. She's not just saying I'm conservative. She is doing something that I think that people out there should know uh, about. And that is she has taken the Bible study uh, template and she's applied it to the Constitution and the Federalist Papers. No, it's amazing. It's, it's an actress that really has jeopardized her career uh, to, to, to focus on teaching young people, and particularly young women, the Constitution, the Federalist Papers, the founding documents. And Janine's a perfect example. She knows more about the Federalist Papers than I'm sure two-thirds of the people in Congress. I mean, and, and it's self-taught. It's just getting down into the documents and grinding it through. And that's one of the reasons we, I wonder in the film, because here's a, a working professional that has really given up. I mean, many of these people's lives have changed as they've gotten involved in this awakening or involved in the Tea Party movement. But many of them have left, quite frankly, professional careers or had their careers kind of damaged because of their involvement. But that's why I say these people are true patriots. Janine Turner is someone, a great example, who puts her country above herself. And I consider that a patriot, and I think she's a tremendous inspiration, and that's why she's, uh, she does such a fantastic job. But just to remind people, everybody knows her from Northern Exposure, and she was in the Stallone movie Cliffhanger. Uh, so she's, she's a Hollywood beauty uh, who certainly has brains. And from the Tea Party front, I've met these two uh, heroes, Jenny Beth Martin, who's with, who, who is one of the co-founders of the incredibly influential Tea Party Patriots, and Jamie Radke, who I had the pleasure of meeting when she was given an award for her leadership uh, for her organizing a Virginia-based Tea Party. What can you tell me about Jenny Beth and Jamie? Well, Jenny Beth, a great example. Jenny Beth's uh, husband.
in a, they had a business. He gave some personal guarantees to, 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 to a partner, and their business went sideways. They, they stood up and, and, and took the brunt of the fall. They declared bankruptcy. Uh, they had to go on unemployment for a while. They finally started cleaning. They had 16 cents in their bank account, and they decided they had to start cleaning people's houses. In order their to neighbors, their neighbors' houses. Their neighbor, neighbors' houses. I mean, how humiliating can that be? Right. I mean, they started with, you know, they were clipping coupons and had 16 cents. And she just got, you know, she was inspired by the Rick Santelli rant. She was one of the first people, I think, the next night to kind of get on this conference call, started tweeting, started getting on Spark Girl Politics. The next thing you know, she, she's, she's leading a, in Atlanta. She's leading one of the first Tea Party, um, you know, rallies. And now she's the national coordinator and one of the co-founder of Tea Party Patriots and, uh, and one of the, the, you know, the national coordinator. In addition, Time magazine picked her as representative of these people that had really formed the Tea Party movement and named her as one of the 100 most influential people in the world. And so then two and a half years ago, she was cleaning her neighbor's, uh, cleaning her neighbor's uh, you know, bathrooms. Well, we're speaking with Steve Bannon, the director. He's a filmmaker uh, who did uh, Generation Zero, the definitive work on uh, the financial crisis that, that uh, we find ourselves in, how we got there. But we're talking about his latest film that, that will be the predicate. People will understand that he saw what what was going on at the tea party and that the leadership was coming from uh women um it's called fire from the heartland go to firefromtheheartland.com uh, to get this video it's fantastic it's it's created by uh groundbreaking uh production citizens united's production uh, you know them from the uh the Supreme Court ruling, uh, which which I think helped everybody on the First Amendment front. Uh, I want to end on on talking about our our the person that we both uh, saw a while back and said that is a legitimate star. That is a media star uh, for the 21st century. Uh, she's a, she started off as a mommy blogger. She she's married to a rocker. Uh, and and she's on CNN now all the time. And this isn't just a token conservative. This this gal fights the fight while she's homeschooling her own children, and that's Dana Lash. Yeah, she, she's absolutely amazing. You know, somebody that talks the talk and walks the walk. I think she's the what I call the paradigm of, of this uh, new conservative commentator activist. She's both active in the Tea Party movement. She's a not only a writer and a blogger, a tremendous writer. She's a radio talk show host and on TV. She's mesmerizing. In the film, I've had so many people come up to me and want to know if she was like an actress, if she was a movie star. <laughs> and I said, no, she's actually you know a radio commentator from... Uh, from St. Louis, so she's a rising star. I think when people in, 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 in Dr. Savage's audience, when you see this film, and, and by the way, these women are emblematic. I could have picked another 100 or another 200 and been just the same. You will see that this movement is not only a true grassroots movement, but it's in very good hands because these women, from, from people like from, from Dana all the way to Sonny, they are not going to quit. They are not going to give up. I mean, this is the very, November 2nd is just the top of the yeah. first inning. This is a long haul, and these people are, are dedicated to see this revolution through top 10. I know, and we've got Generation Y represented in Essie Cup, who's fun. She's politically incorrect. Uh, she's she embodies. She, she is. She scares the living daylights out of Manhattan media because she she's a whiskey drinking, meat eating gal, and she's basically uh, going through Manhattan, breaking the feminist template of uh, of the now generation and saying women, just like blacks and just like Hispanics, have a right to be individuals in, in the United States. And you also honor, of course, Michelle Malkin and Ann Coulter, who have been fighting the good fight, taking the slings and arrows uh, in the pre-Tea Party era before uh, the America, uh, before America awakened. Thank you very much, Steve Bannon. Firefromtheheartland.com. Buy the movie. You've got to see it. These women are such inspirations. This is Andrew Breitbart sitting in for Michael Savage on The Savage Nation.